Hello, you're watching PC Jack. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Decool AK620, specifically the white edition. I've been really excited to get hands on with this cooler, even more so based on the fact that it's a bit of a mid range price for a CPU air cooler at around £60 as of the time of filming, which, compared to the Noctua NHD15, which comes in around £20 to £30 more, may actually make it a pretty compelling offer. So we'll be making some pretty strong comparisons between the two over the course of this video to gauge the overall value of the AK620 while assessing its overall performance as a whole. There's a lot of dual tower heatsink air coolers on the market currently like the Cyfuma 2 or even the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 but obviously those ones are in a bit of a higher price bracket but it's still worth mentioning those as other options if you are in the market for a dual tower heatsink. So before we begin, let's take a look at what's under the hood. The AK620 is a dual tower cooler coming in at 59.99 as of the time of filming. In terms of size, the cooler is 160mm in height and provides clearance for memory up to 43mm in height or with only the mill fan installed, 59mm and in terms of weight comes in at 1.74kg. As typical of most dual tower heatsinks, the cooler includes two 120mm fans for a push-pull config. The heatsink actually has this weird checkerboard looking design which is pretty cool looking but to be fair once it's installed in the case you're not going to see it anyway. The cooler makes use of what Deepcool advertises as a precision machine convex copper base and six copper heat pipes that deliver improved heat transfer capabilities. In regards to socket compatibility, the cooler can be installed on AMD sockets including AM4 and also AM5 as it can use the included motherboard backplate. For Intel sockets, this cooler supports socket types including LGA 2066, 2011, 1700, 1200, 1151, 1150 and 1155. For today's testing, I've installed the AK620 on my older test testbed which uses an LGA1700 socket and I have to say the installation was really straightforward. I'm very quick to judge a cooler with a poor mounting system, but I have to say that the solution that Deepcool has implemented is actually really simple and straightforward to do. So if you're wondering how to install the AK620 for yourself, here's a quick little tutorial for installing it on an Intel socket. To install the AK620, you'll need these parts. The included Intel backplate, four of these standoffs, four of these nuts, two of these mounting brackets, a fan splitter, thermal paste, and finally a long screwdriver which comes in the box. To start, for LGA 1700, push the screws of the backplates outwards and they will click into place. And then you can pass the backplate through the slots on your motherboard. Next, thread the standoffs over the four protruding screws and then place the mounting brackets over the screws using the highlighted slots for LGA 1700. Take your nuts and thread these over to secure the mounting brackets and then screw into place. Now take your cooler and ensuring to remove the protective film from the base plate, apply thermal paste to your CPU and then slowly lower the cooler over your CPU's IHS and then begin screwing alternately on either side to ensure even mounting pressure. Once the screws stop turning, the heatsink is ready to go. Finally, pass the middle fan through the heatsink and clip into place as well as the fan on the front. Plug both fans into the splitter and then plug into your motherboard CPU fan header. Overall, this installation process probably takes about 5 minutes so I have to give huge props to Deepcool for implementing such a simple system. Of course, what is most important is going to be performance. For today's testing, we'll be using my older Lake test bench, which features an Intel Core i5-12600K running on the MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk DDR4 Wi-Fi. I've tested the AK620 at three different power loads, ranging from 100 watts all the way up to 200 watts to assess the cooler's performance at various power states. For a full breakdown of my CPU cooler testing methodology, I published a dedicated video looking at this, which I'll include in the video description. Using noise normalized thermals will better allow us to actually gauge the overall performance of the AK620 compared to the other air coolers I've tested on the channel. Again, I was particularly interested to compare the AK620 directly against the NHD15, seeing how similar they are in size and design, so we'll be paying particularly close attention to these two when looking at our results. So starting with our 100 watt thermal load testing, our AK620 takes the lead and dethrones the NHD15 with both idle and low temperatures at 28 and 53 C respectively. A 1 degree C lead, but a lead nonetheless. Moving on to our 150 watt load test, again the AK620 takes the lead with an average idle temperature of 33C and a low temperature of 71C. The NHD15 retains the lead when it comes to its idle temperatures, but again the AK620 has overtaken it under load by a small margin. Finally, looking at our 200 watt load testing, the AK620 comes out with an average idle temperature of 35C which the NHD15 again leads in, but the AK620 takes the top spot under load with an average temperature of 84C. With these results, the AK620 now takes the crown on the charts as the best performing CPU air cooler on the channel. Taking a look at these results, the need to take a look at dual tower heatsinks as a cooling solution is going to be more important as CPU power requirements start to increase even more, and it actually makes the need for something like a water cooler to be even more prevalent. But not everyone wants an AIO, which is why it's hugely important that they can get the best that they can when it comes to air cooling. 
Noctua is always a top contender in these cases, but it's always good to see other brands like Deep Cool sneak up and take the top spot. And while the AK620 has certainly achieved this, which is no small feat, over the next few years, the dual tower heatsinks design will have to keep up with the CPU power requirements, and with Noctua expected to launch a next gen NHD15, brands like Deep Cool will have to bear this in mind. Closing things out though, my only consideration would be what kind of CPU you are going to pair with this cooler. I can easily recommend this cooler for something like the 7950X or the 13900K which obviously have much higher power requirements, but when it comes to something like a Ryzen 5 or i3 or an i5 from Intel side, it is going to be massively overkill. The only consideration I would have if you're looking to pair this cooler with a much lower end CPU like say the 5600X is that maybe you're looking for as minimal noise as possible, in which case this cooler is great for that. But in terms of actual performance, you could easily get away with something a lot cheaper and smaller like say the NHU12S Redux or even Cooler Master's Hyper 212. Both of those are great coolers, but again, they are pretty much all you would need when it comes to a CPU around that level. Lastly, other consideration is going to be case compatibility. These kind of coolers do demand a lot of space in your system and given the 160mm height requirement, this does limit some of your choices when it comes to choosing your case. If you're looking at slightly larger ITX cases though, maybe like the Fractal Define Nano S, that will fit the AK620 but only barely. At that point though, you're probably already considering smaller cooling options due to the limiting factor of a small enclosure. The last thing I have to say about the AK620 though is, given the £60 price point, and how it doesn't outperform the NHD15 by a massive amount. It does clearly outperform it when it comes to value, as you are getting a significantly cheaper cooler with performance to boot, which is possibly the best thing you could get out of these kinds of coolers. So I can easily recommend this one if you are looking for top of the line air cooling for a CPU. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Let me know your thoughts on the AK620 down in the comments below. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PCJack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while helping to fund everyone on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.